Hey, it's Craig. I just wanted to let you know that you can listen to Canadian History X early and ad-free on Amazon Music, included with Prime. Greetings and welcome to another episode of Canadian History X. If you'd like to support the podcast, you can. Just go to patreon.com slash Canada EHX. Growing up in the 1990s, there were a lot of great shows. And one show I enjoyed was the Drew Carey Show. And the Drew Carey Show led me to another show called Whose Line Is It Anyways? And it was on that show that I saw a Canadian, well, actually two Canadians, because Ryan Stiles is also Canadian, but I saw another Canadian named Colin Mockery. And I've seen him in a lot of things. I've seen him in various shows. He did a wonderful cameo on Corner Gas. And I saw him just recently over Zoom, because we did an interview together, and we talked about his new show called Stream of Consciousness with Brad Sherwood, where they do improv over Zoom. It's a really cool idea, and we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the arts, the importance of the arts during COVID, and a whole bunch of other things. So I really hope you enjoy it, and let's get to it. How are you doing during COVID-19? It's really hard to um, talk uh, positively about a pandemic, <laughs> but I have to say um, it's been quite uh, good for me. And please uh, listen before people jump on. Um, right before the pandemic hit, I was doing two different tours, one with Brad Sherwood, and I was doing one with Asad Meki, who's a hypnotist. And I was also filming a movie in Utah. So um, from January to March, it had just been insane, just going from one city to another, doing one project after another. Then I went from that to um, being in the vulnerable section of a pandemic. So um, I uh, came back to Canada and it was literally the first time in decades I um, had been home for this long. Um, and it's been nice. I, I, it's been nice seeing my, um, my wife, who I love dearly. <laughs> um, our daughter had been, she had uh, kind of moved in just before everything happened. And so the three of us have had a, sort of a good time amongst the anxiety of <laughs> being in a pandemic with no work. <laughs> <laughs> Got to find the positives. <laughs> yeah, it, it's getting harder and harder. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it's uh, been interesting. Nice. Um, so I've with the pandemic, um, I've heard a lot of uh, stand ups will do shows over Zoom, uh, things like that. But uh, you don't hear too much about improv over Zoom. So how did the stream of consciousness, uh, virtual st st stream of consciousness, kind of come about with uh, with Brad? Um, well, we realized, I think, fairly soon into it that, you know, my life for the past 17 years has been flying and theaters. And it seemed like those were kind of the two last things that were going to be able to uh, function in a way that would uh, feel safe to us. So we thought, well, why don't we try to, um, we'll do our show on um, online. And we got together with our uh, management team and they had a tech crew and we sort of worked out this new show. We realized fairly early on that it couldn't just be um, almost like a concert film of our stage show. Uh, you know, on stage, we can take more time doing scenes. We can, you know, interact with the audience more. When you're doing it um, on Zoom, you're immediately in television land. So people's attention sort of wanders off, you know, to whatever's happening in the room or they look after the kids or the dog. So we came up with this, uh, we sort of adapted some of our games and made it more of sort of an improvised uh, sketch show where uh, we, it's all totally improvised. We still get things from the audience through a technology I do not understand. <laughs> we can actually go into people's living rooms and have them interact with us in scenes. So it's been um, interesting. I think what was great about it is it really gave uh, uh, Brad and I um, a creative burst of energy. We came up with um, all of these things to sort of get by past the obstacles of the technology and uh, get to a point where we're really happy with the show. 
Uh, kind of in regards to that creative burst of energy. So it's kind of, uh, like you said, for the past 17 years, you've been doing uh, theaters and shows and uh, yet whose line is it anyways. And so is this kind of like this, this new thing that you get to, to try and do with new challenges and, and new ways of looking at something you've been doing for so long? Yeah, absolutely. We're, you know, we're, there's limitations with, with Zoom, and there, I, there's another platform called Wirecast that we use in conjunction. Again, don't ask me <laughs> anything about it. I don't know how they do it. Um, but we, um, the first couple of shows we did, the tough part was, you know, uh, I'm acting with acting with uh, uh, Brad, but there's also a monitor off to my side so I can sort of see that I'm uh, sort of in the right spacing with him. <laughs> and so the first couple of shows, that was in the top part of our brain was the technical part of it. Mm -hmm. And then since then, we've gotten much more relaxed. We see that it works. Uh, and so we've actually started getting back to doing what we do in our show, having fun, kind of goofing with each other, trying to put each other in difficult spots. So it's um, it's been interesting. Uh, I mean, still, the weird thing is doing an improv show to no laughter, uh, <laughs> you know, which, which Brad is totally used to. But it really throws <laughs> me a little. Um, it's been, um, I mean, on my monitor, I can see the audience and the, the Zoom, pro and I can see them laugh but I, I can't hear anything. So I just assume, every show I just assume is a resounding success and it's just been nonstop <laughs> laughter. It, it's been weird having to have that extra thing of, nope, I'm pretty sure this is funny. <laughs> I'm just going to go with this. <laughs> it's been um, interesting. So in, you, you have the audience and the audience is a big part of it, but I guess what's the challenge with, cause you're not on stage with anybody, like you said, to be interacting with another performer who is nowhere near you, but you kind of got to feed off their energy and them off of, off of yours. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, it's interesting because uh, Brad is in Las Vegas. I'm in Toronto. And um, again, through the technology, it looks like we're in the same room mm -hmm. and we can, interact with so there are some times where i'm actually fooled that we oh yeah we are in the same room except i turned to my <laughs> one there uh, but it's been uh we still somehow managed to have the connection and i think part of it is you know we've been friends for over 30 years now we've been uh, touring for uh, 18 almost 19 years so th there's that relaxation. It's almost like having you're having a zoo, uh, a FaceTime with a friend or something. You're just mm -hmm. goofing around, it's, except that there's an audience who's paid money. <laughs> but aside from that, uh, I totally the same. Uh, how do you do the viewer engagement? Like, how do how does somebody? Uh, I guess I, I, like some improv show, somebody will shout something out, but maybe that's hard with Zoom. So how how do you get the uh, the audience engaged in what you guys are doing? Yeah, we. I mean, we learned pretty early with when people start yelling in Zoom, people just <laughs> the speaker uh, thing just keeps moving. Um, so uh, we um, on our main screen, we say, okay, we're going. We've broken the show into three different parts, so we get suggestions before each part, mm -hmm. and we say, okay, we want to ask for suggestions. Then beside us, uh, all the audience people are in their little squares, and we'll go. Okay, I'm going to uh, I'm going to ask for I need a, an occupation or something, and they will raise their hands, and then their screen will come up, and then we can actually talk to them a little bit. Where are you from? Blah 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 blah. blah. Give us the suggestion. Oh, that sucks. But anyway, we're going to do it. <laughs> um, so we it, it's nice, and a couple of scenes we have um, like straight interactions with them. So we still have that. Um, interaction that I think we were afraid we would we would lose in this format because it really is a big part of our show. Um, us building a relationship with the audience and, and talking to them, having fun with them. Um, because they're, you know, in our, our stage shows, they're our, our third improv member. They're giving us all the ideas. So we're trying to, you know, basically suck up to them <laughs> so that they feel <laughs> relaxed and are there to give us the best suggestions that, that they can and uh, to help us get through the show. 
Uh, is there limitations to to doing the the improv? Like, could you do it with uh, four four other people, like you say would on stage, uh, or is kind of two kind of that sweet spot because then it's just the two of you uh, working together rather than a whole bunch of people trying to figure something out? Yeah, uh, in in this kind of format, I think two is the best. I have done Zoom improv shows with larger casts. Um, and there's sort of a moderator who says, okay, we're going to do a scene and it'll be Colin and whoever. So they fix it that way. But you can't, doing a group scene is is really difficult. Mm-hmm. And it's really weird with everybody and they're becoming <laughs> in their Brady Bunch squares <laughs> trying to interact. <laughs> and you're trying to, because, and the screens are different on everyone's thing. So you have no idea if you're looking at the right area. <laughs> and you, you don't want to jump on someone's line. So yeah, two is perfect. Um, any other challenges that you guys didn't really foresee uh, other than like the obvious ones of nobody kind of being in the room with you and not being able to uh, hear the laughter like you mentioned? Yeah, uh, I don't think there were anything. Uh, I mean, the first couple of shows, you know, things take you by surprise where you go, oh, I, we didn't see that coming. <laughs> where it's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, obviously, uh, that's something we should have thought about. But it, it's gone uh, a kind of uh, smoothly. And as I say, the, the more we're doing it, the more fun we're having with it. And I think that's the thing we're going to find more and more as we get even more comfortable with the technology. And uh, right now we've uh, kept sort of um, one specific sort of set list of games we do, but we have a whole backlog of others that, but we just wanted to make sure that the concept kind of works, the premise works, and then we'll start putting new things in. And I'm sure we'll find new problems once we start doing that. <laughs> uh, what's the, what's the response been like from uh, the attendees uh, being part of this kind of brand new experience? It's been uh, great. Uh, after the show, we have a uh, sort of a Q and a, so people can stay afterwards and, and, um, on all the shows we've done, up where it's always been over 90% of the audience has stayed. So I take that as a good sign that they haven't gone, oh, no. <laughs> turn this off. And uh, the response has been uh, very, uh, very positive. People are enjoying it. And, uh, you know, it's right now it's the closest uh, you're going to get to uh, uh, improv um, in the foreseeable future. <laughs> so it's, um, and I, I think people have, you know, come in uh, as a bit of a curiosity thing to see, well, how is this going to work? And by the end, are kind of impressed by uh, probably more of the technology than us, but we don't <laughs> care. As long as they They're there. Going. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, is it kind of... T- like when you're on stage in the crowd, you maybe don't always see the crowd because the lights and everything, but is it distracting at times to have all of these squares with all these people kind of staring at you and, you know, you're seeing into their house, you're seeing their dogs walking in the background or, or whatever? Yeah. Um, we, uh, <coughs> excuse me, we, we don't have it up for the entire show. Okay. Uh, it is on the other monitor, but uh, on the basic show, it only comes up when we're asking for suggestions. So, um, I try every once in a while, if I'm not quite sure, I'll try to sneak a look <laughs> to see, okay, okay, they're laughing. All right, good. <laughs> but yeah, most of the time, you just kind of, it's, it's like any improv show where you're just, um, sometimes it's like almost 80% panic, where you're just <laughs> trying to survive whatever the game is and working with a with suggestion and your partner. So um, you don't really think about it until afterwards. Um, is it, I feel like this is something that you provide that uh, is really good for this time because, you know, a lot of people are still at home. Uh, you can only watch so much, you know, Office on Netflix or whatever. Uh, so is this kind of a good outlet for people uh, that you feel that you're providing uh, to them? I think so. I think what this pandemic has shown is that the arts are an essential service. I mean, once everybody was sort of in lockdown, turned to Netflix and TV show, going to, uh, you know, shows they grew up with as sort of a comfort uh, mm-hmm. of viewing and then live concerts. And this is just an extension of that. I think um, my hope is, and believe me, I'm not, a, 
uh, an optimist. I, I always am quick to believe in the worst of humanity. <laughs> but my hope would be that people remember that during this time, they turn to the arts and that there be more support of it as things move on. That is my wish. Uh, so, you know, we'll see if that happens. Uh, that being said, there have been times where I have been um, sort of uplifted by humanity during this time. I've seen some um, amazing things done by people and the, the frontline workers, uh, kudos to all that they have done. Um, so I, uh, I, and I hate when I, I have little bits of optimism burn in me because I feel <laughs> I'm just going to get disappointed. But this time feels a little different. I think that the, the little flames of optimism could burst into giant <laughs> fire, change and goodness. <laughs> uh, it kind of in relation to that. Um, and like you said, I, I don't want to be, you know, saying, oh, the positives of COVID because there's many, many negatives to it. But could one of the positives be more people, like you said, uh, seeing the arts as as not just something that, you know, you, you watch or do on a Saturday night, but a vital part of, of you know, our experience as a, as a culture and uh, something that we very much need? Absolutely. I mean, I... Uh... People sort of take it for granted, but I think if all of a sudden there was nothing, there was no television, there was no music, there was no art, that would leave an incredible gap in our lives and um, what we do and how we interact with each other. And, um, and the ideas we would miss because of uh, the ideas art puts out. So I, I, I hope, I truly, come on people, come on. <laughs> Make the arts as important as the military, as important as anything else we have in our countries because it, it truly is. And you've, you all know this. You, you, if I said to you, hey, uh, you know, what's your favorite TV show? What's your favorite piece of music? What's your favorite piece of art? If I said, who is your favorite military general? You'd stop and have to think for a while, wouldn't yeah. you? Absolutely. Art. That's the way to go. <laughs> um, just to step back a bit, but tell me a bit about your book, uh, Not Quite the Classics. Oh, yeah. Um, I was basically forced to write this book. Um, <laughs> my agent, who loves uh, finding me kind of work all the time, said, um, you know, you should write a book. I said, but I... I don't want to. I, I don't have anything um, that I'm, you know, dying to write. Uh, and it's work. I mean, it's a lot of work. And part of the reason I'm an improviser is I'm lazy. I like to be able to go somewhere where, oh, no, I could just make up crap. It's fine. That's my job. And uh, so based on that information, he got me a book deal. So um, I had to come up with something. So I thought, oh, what would be the least amount of work? could do to write a book and I thought oh I don't want to do a life story because my life truly isn't that interesting I you know I've been incredibly lucky I love what I do but you know it may be a good pamphlet and that's it <laughs> so I thought um oh why don't I improvise so there's a game called first line last line where you get the first line from the audience you get the last line of a scene from the audience. So you have your beginning and end, and then you use that beginning to make up the middle to get to the end. So I thought I'll get the first and last line of classic novels and then make up the middle. Uh, <laughs> so the first problem was finding classics that had a great opening line <laughs> and a great closing line. They, sometimes they had one, sometimes they had the other, but to find one that had, um, so that was a, a problem. And then my, the first story I did was the Sherlock Holmes one. And it was like drinking wine. It was just so easy. It just flowed out. I thought, oh, this writing thing isn't so bad. <laughs> this, I'll be done this book in a week. <laughs> and that was the last good moment I had. <laughs> and then from then on, it was just like, oh, how does Stephen King write a book every year? That's 2,000 pages long. This is insane. I can see why they all drink. Um, but I got through it. And um, I did. I, there was a sense of pride. 
that I, I did get through it. And I was, I would say I was happy with most of it, um, which was good. And then, you know, people always say, you know, so you're writing another one. It's like, no, you know, it's, <laughs> It's not like childbirth where you forget the pain and decide to have another one. I remember every bit of pain of writing that book. One so, and done. <laughs> yeah. Unless something spectacular comes to me and um, I need to do something, but um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't count on it. Um, so other than the, uh, the, the Zoom shows and everything, kind of what, are you, what have you been doing with your time over the past, uh, I guess it's been like six, seven months now. Yeah. Uh, doing a lot of podcasts. Um, I've done some improv shows with uh, sort of um, young troops across America, which has been interesting because uh, I always, uh, when we you know worked on stages <laughs> so long ago, <laughs> I always enjoyed working with improv uh, troops that I didn't know because um, I, I found it sort of got me back to my basics of actually having to listen and supporting and um, at being surprised. So it was, it was always sort of a good um, refresher course, kick in the butt kind of uh, <laughs> thing. So uh, I've been doing that and then mostly cooking. Um, <laughs> I've done all the cooking in our marriage since 1990 because uh, at the time we were living in Los Angeles, my wife was doing a, a television show that she had created and she'd always hated cooking. So I said <laughs> one day, I, I had no papers. I, I couldn't work in the States. So I was basically looking after our newborn who was like three months old at that point. So I said, hey, Deb, this cooking thing, do you just look at recipes and do it? And she went, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's all you do. <laughs> so um, I started doing it and loved it. So um Cut to uh, <laughs> how many years? 30 years later, um, my wife has uh, developed a gluten free um, uh, problem, a gluten problem. Mm -hmm. um, my daughter is pescatarian, and I'll, I'm a carnivore. I'll eat anything. <laughs> so basically, it's been, been I, I've been uh, sort of dabbling in amateur um, restauranteering, coming up <laughs> with menus where everybody can enjoy it and <laughs> people won't get sick. So that's, that's taken a lot of my energy. Um, what about after, uh, hopefully, you know, when COVID eventually we get a vaccine or something, but what, what do you hope to be doing uh, after uh, COVID? Do you have any plans for that? It's kind of hard to say because we don't really know when that will be, but. Yeah, I, you know, um, it, I really feel theaters are going to kind of be the last to come back. Um, I have been doing uh, some television, which is interesting because, um, you know, of course, it's totally different <laughs> to uh, anything that's happened before. Now you you go, you, you get your temperature taken, you fill out a form, mm -hmm. um, everyone's separated. You have masks on until they say action, then you take your mask off, you act, <laughs> then you put them back on. <laughs> um, so it's been, and I have to say, the, uh, the shows I've worked on have been very, uh, very good at um, obeying the law and making sure everyone <laughs> feels safe. You know, there's big partitions between everyone as they're getting their makeup done. Everybody has their own uh, makeup um, utensils that nobody else has used. Uh, there's no craft tables anymore. Um, there's, when you get your lunch, you just pick up a bag. So it's been um, interesting sort of adapting to that and seeing how that works. So um, I, I know I have a couple of more television things to do. You know, I'd love to get back on stage. Uh, again, I don't know when that'll happen and how it's going to happen. It's weird to think to be in a theater and having pockets of people throughout the theater. Um, but who knows? I mean, uh, the beauty, uh, as you can see from, um, if you studied my career, I have no idea what goes on. <laughs> just, um, I just go from place to place and end up, you know, yeah, I'll do a Shakespeare thing. Yeah, I'll do this, I'll do that. Whatever makes me uncomfortable, I enjoy doing because it, it, I find that's when it's most fun for me. Oh, that's good because you can adapt to, to things like this uh, a lot easier than other people. 
I, yeah, I tell you that yes and has really helped during this time. Uh, <laughs> it, guys, if you're feeling anxious, go out and take some improv classes. I tell you, <laughs> you'll get through this. <laughs> um, and then just uh, my last question is, uh, how do people register uh, or attend the, the Stream of Consciousness uh, improv shows? Hey, that's a good question. I feel I should have that on my fingers. Um, there is a website, uh, passportshows.com, and that has um, our, a listing of our shows coming up. And I think you can just click on there and it will take you to, I think this week we're in Akron. <laughs> we're, we're in Akron <laughs> somehow. And then we have, I think we have some UK dates later in. Uh, <laughs> I love the fact we're touring the world. And I'm in my basement. <laughs> it's like the best of all possible worlds. Um, in relation to that, I kind of forgot to ask, but so you you focus on, it's not just like uh, somebody from London and somebody from Las Vegas and somebody from Florida. It's specific locations that you guys kind of focus on uh, for the Zoom improv? Yeah, any, anyone uh, around the world can go to any show. But... Uh, Every week, it's done through um, in co cooperation with a, a specific theater somewhere. So I think they open it up to their um, subscription base first, but you can always uh, get in. We, we've done shows and we have people from New Zealand, uh, Abu Dhabi, and like people who are watching this at like three in the morning in their country. <laughs> well, God bless them. Thank you. Um, so yeah. If you, if you want to, watch it from uh, anywhere. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Colin Mockery. And if you did, please leave a rating and review. You can reach me at craig at canadaehx.com. You can visit my website where you'll find hundreds of articles, including all of my podcast episodes. Just go to canadaehx.com. And again, you can support the podcast at Patreon. Just go to patreon.com slash canadaehx. Just like all of these wonderful patrons have. Aaron O'Hara, Robert Dunseith, Todd Casey, Catherine Roa, Luke S., Vic Hedges, J.P. Bear, Jason Hall, Phil Maynard, Spencer M., and Iris Gray. Thanks, and we'll see you again next time.